हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो माई सेल्फ पुष्पेंद्र सिंह आई वेलकम यू ऑल एंड हियर वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द बायोलॉजी फॉर योर नीट एग्जामिनेशन राइट सो यू कैन गेट द कंटेंट द लेक्चर्स associated with the biology which is a subject in your neat examination so as you know that biology is a subject which you study in your school time right it was a part of or it is a part of your science books till class 10th and thereafter you would have a separate subject called biology right and definitely in the graduations you will have further uh you know subdivision of this biology or further classification right uh, in terms of zoology botany etc so you will have further specialization okay so what we are going to cover here is basically uh your portion of the biology so we are strictly going to cover the biology with respect to uh you know uh, your neat examination so we will strictly follow the syllabus the type of questions that is basically asked in your neat examination so it's a very very uh, you know a uh, crucial exam for those who aspire to become a doctor all right so you might be aware about the mbbs which is a uh, basically uh, you know uh, most sought uh, you know uh, the profession nowadays and uh, it is also very very important to crack that neat examination before you get admitted into uh, you know uh, basically uh, the medical colleges so okay so let's begin uh some of the important concepts associated with the biology as you know that uh we will go subject uh, we will go topic by topic and we will be covering entire portion through these sub topics okay so initially i would be covering the reproduction in organism okay so uh, it it might take some time before uh, uh, we proceed further to another topics okay so one by one we will be covering all those subjects so now here very important point to be noted here is that uh, we will be covering this these lectures definitely through this whiteboard that you might be you know uh, able to watch right so through that and i will be teaching you through the slides itself okay the powerpoint slides or the powerpoint presentation so the lectures would be entirely based on the powerpoint definitely some of the concepts i will be telling you through the diagrams all throughout the lectures okay and uh, if required i would also certainly uh, present you those diagrams would illustrate those diagrams would explain those those diagrams with uh with you know uh, uh, uh with your biological understanding okay theek hai so let's begin with the lecture right so that is our first lecture now what is reproduction in organism okay so let's start with a new slide okay so what is first of all before we proceed to the reproduction let me first start with a very basic concept okay the very basic concept that is basically called you know the life span just give me one minute okay so let's start with a very basic concept of life span what is that okay so what is the life span we are talking so life span is nothing but a period 
okay it is the period from your birth to the natural death okay so the entire interval or the entire time from the birth to the natural death is called the life span of any organism okay now the life span of a particular organism are not necessarily correlated with their size okay you may have different different organism right the organism can be you know a small or it can be bigger we will be understanding through the diagrams or through the examples so the lifespan is not something which is necessarily correlated with their sizes the small organism may have you know a bigger lifespan or the larger organism may have smaller lifespan okay so for example you might have seen the crow okay the life the size of the crow and the parrot are very different but right uh, you know they are not very different yet their life spans have very much difference in terms of the years okay similarly if you take an example of a tree okay for example we take an example of mango okay so mango tree has certainly a much shorter life span okay if you take another example called people okay the people have certainly the larger you know uh, or the longer life span okay so whatever be the life span okay uh, of any organism the death of every individual organism is certainly you know is is or it will be there so what we call is none is immortal so you can say that no individual or no organism is immortal okay except a single celled organism okay now to illustrate the life span as we have seen that the life span is a period or is a time between your or is a period between the birth and your natural death for example the elephant the elephant has the life span of around you can say around 70 to 95 or 90 years okay similarly you will have the rose okay which is having the life span of 5 to 7 years okay similarly you have the dog which is having the life span of 20 to 30 years then you have a butterfly which is having the life span of around 1 to 2 1 to 2 weeks only okay then you have the crow we have seen example that is hardly 15 years okay the life span okay then you will have a banana tree banana tree that is having the life span of around 20 to 25 years then you have the cow the life span of around 15 to 25 years that what we are talking in terms of range because certainly the geographically uh, you know their life varies okay just like it's just like you know we have uh, you know uh, the life expectancy which varies geographically when you go to the developed countries definitely the life expectancy is higher but when you come to the uh, you know developing countries or under developed countries the you know life expectancy of the humans are also some fair comparatively much much lower when you talk about parrot it is 140 years okay similarly when you say the crocodile it is around 60 years when you say horse it is around 62 years okay you say the fruit fly it is around just 20 to 30 days only very less okay you will have the rice or the rice plant which is 
three to four months only you will have the tortoise tortoise you will have around 100 to 150 years only then you will have the banyan tree that is 200 to 300 years okay so sometime what happens is that the questions can be asked which among uh, the following you know uh, species or organism has you know the highest or the largest lifespan okay so these are some of the approximate lifespans of some of these organisms you should try to learn okay uh, try to understand these uh, uh, these you know uh, the lifespans okay next we should move further understanding or further developing of our understanding on the lifespan so here you must understand that uh, uh, the next topic that we are going to cover the reproduction okay so what is the reproduction okay so reproduction is nothing but a biological process so it is a biological process in which a particular organism give rise to the younger ones or we call them the offsprings okay these offsprings are similar to the particular organism so what we call the offspring that nothing but the person's child or a children okay so a young creation of a living organism they can be produced either by a single organism or in case of you know you will have some sort of a mechanism to produce these offsprings okay now when you consider about these offsprings they grow they mature and they also turn to produce the newer offsprings okay so in the biology these offsprings are the young creation of the living organism they either produce as i told you either by the single organism or in case of you know the sexual reproduction right the two organism basically you know uh, you know give birth to these young creations right that we call offspring so collective offsprings may be known as the brood or progeny right collective so that we call basically brood or progeny in basically in a very general way so thus uh, there is a cycle of birth growth and the death of a particular organism because as i told you such offsprings also they grow okay they mature and also they produce the new offsprings okay so uh, what is the uh, the essence or the significance of this reproduction they basically enables the continuity of a particular species generations after generation so that ensures that such generation or other particular species do not get extinct or do not get you know uh, uh, you know uh, you know and uh, big, uh, you know because of uh, some reasons so reproductions basically enables such type of continuity of these particular species so the organism habitat right uh, 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 its internal physiology several other factors are collectively responsible for how it produce okay so we will learn more about it uh, about those factors what are different factors that are responsible for such type of reproduction so when such type of offsprings are produced by a single parent okay uh, you know with or without the in involvement of the gamete formation the reproduction we call as asexual
the reproduction we call as asexual i repeat again when such type of organism when they are produced by the single parent okay with or without the involvement of such gamete formation okay uh, uh, you know such type of reproduction is called basically asexual so what is this gamete gamete is nothing but you can say that it is a specialized reproductive cell okay that is involved in the sexual reproduction now in animals the gametes are typically sperm cells we call it as male gametes or it can be an egg cells or we call it as female gametes so what happens is that normally uh, during fertilization what will happen a sperm cell fertilize an egg cell to form a zygote okay and which then further developed into the new organism okay so that gamete contain half of the normal number of chromosomes uh, you know allowing for the genetic diversity in a particular offspring now the next we are going to discuss in terms of uh, what is then sexual what is then sexual that is when the two parents participate in the reproductive process just like a humans okay so that is basically involvement of the fusion of the male and female gametes that we call basically the sexual reproduction so what is the sexual reproduction it is nothing but it is a process when two organism of the same species they come together to exchange a genetic material uh, they produce the offsprings and this involves the fusion of the male and female reproductive cells okay now uh, now uh, results that basically results in the genetic variations among the offsprings this type of reproduction allows for the mixing of the genetic traits from both of these parents leading to you know increase in the diversity and adaptability specifically in the population so more is the diversity more is the adaptability okay now first we will we will proceed towards the asexual reproduction the more about the asexual reproduction okay so as we have learned in our last slide what is asexual reproduction so in this method a single individual we call single single individual or single parent okay which is capable of producing offsprings so as a result what happens is that such offsprings that are you know produced are not only identical to the parent but they are exact copies of their parent itself so so uh, so what do you think about these uh, these offsprings are they genetically identical or different so such type of the offsprings we are we are talking about they are you know they are genetically identical right you might have heard about the term called clone what is clone the clone is the term which has been used to morphologically and genetically similar organism okay so those organism okay those organisms that are similar in terms of their morphological characteristics as well as their genetic characteristics they are called clones so what happens is that many single celled organism okay for example we call them for example we take an example of 
द मोनेराज और द प्रोटेस्ट ठीक है दे आर प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय बाइनरी फिजन सो व्हाट इज दैट मोनेराज ओके what is that moneras they are basically nothing but a biological kingdom that are made up of pro prokaryotes okay so you know they are made up of or they are composed of single cell organism that basically lacks the nucleus okay similarly the protist they are single cell organism of a kingdom called protista so any of the you you know eukaryotic unicellular organism including the protozoan right uh, you know uh, you know uh, you know uh, or you can say a sim single or simple alga right they might have produced or they they are produced by the binary fission so member of a kingdom fungi or algae reproduce through a special a sexual reproductive structure that we call basically juice spores so what is juice spores right juice spores are nothing but a spore of certain algae or fungi okay you know uh, or you can say the protozoan that are capable of swimming by means of some sort of a flagellum okay so uh you know you can take the another example like you have the conidia theek hai conidia bugs theek hai and you can take the gamules they are other common asexual reproductive structures that are basically found so if i draw a diagram you can learn more about it for example take an example of a potato for example this is a potato okay you might have heard you or you might have seen about such type of structure on the surface so they are nothing but the eyes okay then you might have heard about a bulge like structure that is called the germinating eye bud okay you might have heard you, you might have seen also such structure on the surface and from there the young plant basically grows out okay now you might have seen such type of thing that is basically nothing but the roots of the particular young plant okay similarly you have seen the ginger for example if i just draw a a small portion of ginger you can appreciate okay now for example just these are gingers and let's make you know the surface of the ginger as it looks like this okay okay now whatever you have seen these scales they are nothing but the nodes okay these portions okay or sometime these portions they are called buds okay then you might have seen a just like a tentacles which basically comes out they are called advancious roots okay now these are some of the roots you can see here like okay 
now the fleshy bud that you might have seen in the ginger which produce a new plants in hydrophyte okay in hydrophyte right and now which are basically you know is called the turian okay so is the vegetative reproduction is also type of asexual reproduction what do you think because what we are talking about the vegetative reproduction so are they uh, you know as, uh, you know also a sexual reproduction yes it is also a sexual reproduction so the term clone what we talked in our last slide are they applicable to the offsprings formed by you know the vegetative reproduction yes they are you know uh, 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 you know you know the clone very much clone is applicable to the offsprings which are produced by vegetative reproduction so what happens in 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 animals and other simple organism you know the term asexual is basically used unambiguously so in plants the term vegetative reproduction is more frequently used because what we uh, generally heard that you know we have heard about the sexual reproduction so in in few animals and the plants or few organisms we have seen or we have seen the term called the sexual unambiguously so in the plants the units of vegetative propagation you know you have uh, you know where the propagation happens they are the runner okay then you have the rhizome then you have the sucker then you have the tuber offset you have bulb okay they are all capable of giving the rise of new offsprings so let's learn about what is runner right so it is nothing but you know uh, uh, you know that shoot that typically leafless which grows from the base of a plant along with the surface you know of a ground that can take root at the point along with its length okay what about the term called rhizome rhizome are nothing but you know a horizontal underground stem of some plant that send out the roots and shoots from its nodes okay then you have the sucker right what is sucker it is nothing but uh, you know something a shoot right from the base of a tree right that specially arising from the root below the ground level at some distance from the main stem or the trunk okay similarly you have you know the tuber which is a nothing but a fleshy underground stem of a particular plant right that generally stores or contains the, the starch right for example you might have seen the potato okay then you have uh, basically a bulb which is basically just like we have seen so, so these structures are basically called the vegetative propagules okay you might have seen also the water hyacinth right that is basically you know a invasive weed that basically grows very fast the water hyacinth is also called the terror of bengal which basically flourish so fast on the surface of the water wherever it find the standing water right what does the water hyacinth do it basically drains out 
the oxygen from the water what will happen the hypoxia type of situation it may create and that ultimately lead to the death of you know the species in the water so the plant was introduced in india you know because of its you know the beautiful flowers the shapes of the leaves right and they can also propagate vegetatively at the phenomenal rate right and they can spread all over the water body in a short period of time and uh, uh, you know uh, this water hyacinth it is very very difficult you know uh, from uh, the water to get rid of okay all right so let's start with the new chapter or the new uh, the topic that is called sexual reproduction okay what is sexual reproduction as we have seen from our last slides that it involve the formation of the male and female gametes male and female gametes either by the same individual or by different individuals of opposite sex so in the sexual reproduction you will have the formation of male and female gametes either by the same individual or by different individuals but definitely of opposite sex so these gametes the male and female gametes they basically fused to form zygote okay the zygote develops to the form which we call new organism okay now this process looks very simple but it's not that much simple it's a very elaborate very complex it's a slow process compared to a sexual reproduction okay now because of the fusion of the male and female gametes the sexual reproduction actually results in the offsprings okay that are not identical to the parents or among themselves so when they basically fuse or when the fusion happens the offsprings we get they are not identical unlike we have seen in the vegetative reproduction they were morphologically and genetically similar but here the offsprings are not identical to the parents okay a study of a diverse organism the plants animals fungi okay show that Uh, though they differ so greatly in external morphology the internal structure right the physiology when it comes to the sexual mode of reproduction surprisingly they share a similar pattern okay so uh, let's discuss first uh, uh, those features that are common to these diverse organism okay so all organism have to reach a certain stage of growth and maturity in their life okay uh, before they can reproduce sexually so uh, they have to pass certain you know the stage of the growth and maturity in their life now that period of growth that we call basically you know the juvenile phase they need to pass this phase before they can reproduce sexually right 
इट इज नोन एज द वेजिटेटिव फेस इट इज नोन एज द वेजिटेटिव फेस इन प्लेट्स ओके डेफिनेटली दिस फेस इज ऑफ डिफरेंट डिफरेंट यू नो ड्यूरेशन इन द डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनिज्म इन सम प्लांट्स राइट यू नो वेर यू नो फ्लॉवरिंग ऑकर्स मोर देन वंस वॉट वुड यू कॉल द इंटर फ्लॉवरिंग पीरियड the interflowering period we call it as mature period okay it is not something that we call basically a vegetative phase okay the plants where you have the annual and biennial types they have the clear cut or they have very clear you know uh, uh vegetative phase they have very clear reproductive phase and they have very clear senescent phase okay what is this senescence it is nothing but a biological aging that is a gradual deterioration of the functional characteristics in a living organism okay so you can call it as the biological aging okay now the term we call senescence can refer to either cellular senescence or to the senescence of the whole organism which involve basically an increase in the death rates or decrease in you know the fecundity in with the increasing age okay all right so uh, so what happens is that uh, you know but you can't simply define these you know it's very very difficult to clearly define these phases when this uh, this stage will come you know to the particular organism a few plants exhibit unusual flowering phenomena you know unusual flowering phenomena okay now you might have seen the bamboo species okay the bamboo species you know they flower only once in their life span or once in their life span generally 50 to 100 years okay they produce the large number of fruits and they die okay another type of plant you can take an example of the strobilanthus kuntiana or we you can call it as the neel kurangi okay that basically flowers once in 12 years so that particular plant the strobi lanthus kuntiana or the neela kurangi that basically flowers once in 12 years right as many of you would have or would know that this plant flowers during you know flower during september october 2006 it's a mass flowering transformed you know uh, you know that transform basically the last tract of hilly areas of kerala at that particular point of time karnataka and tamil nadu you might have seen through the news okay into the blue stretches okay and basically attracted the large number of tourists so the end of the reproductive phase can be considered as one of the parameters of you know the 
द सिनेसेंस और द ओल्ड स्टेज और ओल्ड एज दैट वी कॉल बायोलॉजिकल एजिंग राइट देर आर सम कमिटेंट चेंजेस इन द बॉडी लाइक द स्लोइंग ऑफ मेटाबोलिज्म ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट फेज ऑफ लाइफ स्पेन दैट वी कॉल द स्नेसेंस और द ओल्ड एज और बायोलॉजिकल एजिंग ऑफ अ लाइफ स्पेन सो ओल्ड एज अल्टीमेटली लीड्स टू the death okay so in both plants and animals what will happen the hormones you might have you might heard about the hormones these hormones are responsible for the transition between these three phases the vegetative reproductive reproductive and senescence these hormones are responsible okay so interaction between those hormones and certain environmental factors basically regulate the reproductive or you know the regulate these reproductive process and associated behavioral expressions of these organism so what are the different events of uh, you know the sexual reproduction we will learn you know uh, uh definitely in our next class so we'll end our class here itself and we'll learn our uh, the events in the next